Hi, my name is Pulkit Mishra. Today I'm going to talk about prediction-based power over subscription in cloud platforms. This work is a collaboration between Microsoft Research and Azure. Let me start with the motivation. So large internet companies, including Microsoft, continue to build data centers to meet the demand for their services. In 2020 alone, more than $200 billion was spent worldwide on data center systems. Now, given these high costs, it is highly desirable for a company to efficiently utilize the resources in each data center. Doing so results in lower costs and requires fewer data centers to be built. And it also results in better sustainability. Now, power is typically a bottleneck resource that limits the amount of compute capacity that can be installed in a data center. However, uh, many large internet companies have found that there is a massive power underutilization in their data centers because the power provisioning for servers happens based on the peak demand. But in practice, these servers very rarely consume their peak power simultaneously. To address this underutilization, uh, companies have used power capping and oversubscription successfully, where the idea is to harvest the unutilized power for adding more servers. Doing so may result in a peak power demand across the servers to be greater than the available power inside a data center, and therefore power capping is used for safety. Uh, under power emergencies to cap the power drop server, typically hardware-based capping mechanisms are used that throttle the entire CPU by reducing the frequency of all the cores equally and could throttle, also throttle the memory if needed to honor the power limit for the server. Now, because throttling impacts performance, uh, companies typically profile the impact of capping on their workloads to carefully trade off between performance and the power that can be harvested towards oversubscription. The graph on the right shows an, shows an example of such an analysis, where as the graph shows, for this particular workload, we can harvest 15% power uh, under power emergencies by setting a power limit that is 85% of the provision power, while providing uh, similar performance for this workload as the uncapped case. Now, such a recipe for power capping in our subscription works well when the workloads and their placements are known, but public cloud platforms have many uh, challenges that limit such forms of our subscription. Uh, for example, one, the workloads running on virtual machines on cloud platforms are opaque. The provider does not know which virtual machines are running performance critical workloads. Second, platforms have very dynamic environment where VM arrivals and departures happen all the time, and it prevents any predefined groupings of servers where the idea would be that under power emergencies, we harvest power from servers that are running non-critical workloads while protecting the performance on the servers that are running the critical workloads. And finally, uh, there might be multiple VMs with differing performance requirements that might be running on each server. And in such cases, the typical full server throttling mechanisms that are used would impact the performance of the critical VMs as well. Now, for these reasons, uh, the power or subscription on public cloud platforms has been limited uh, because the providers want to uh, mitigate or completely eliminate the performance impact of capping on the critical workloads. To address this uh, problem, our solution is to use fine-grained power capping for our subscription, where the insights that we have are first. Not all VMs that run on public cloud platforms are performance critical. For example, uh, providers have VMs that run non-production workloads, which could be throttled under power emergencies. Similarly, there might be production VMs that run batch workloads. And if we had the ability to identify the performance criticality of such opaque VMs, then we could use fine-grained power management techniques that are available on most modern processors like uh, per-core dynamic voltage and frequency scaling for throttling specific VMs. This forms the basis for our solution, which is criticality aware per VM power capping in our subscription, where the idea is to provide power safety by throttling the non-critical VMs while protecting the performance of the critical VMs. And it forms the basis for our strategy for criticality aware over subscription as well. Let me start by giving you a high-level overview of per VM power capping, and then I'll describe about how we address some of the challenges that I talked about uh, that limit the oversubscription currently for cloud platforms. So say we have a data center with some number of chassis, where each chassis has a chassis manager and some number of servers. Although I show chassis as an aggregation here, we could have different aggregation in a data center as well, for example, racks. Next, we have an ML system in a data center. Uh, that provides predictions that can be used for optimizing different aspects uh, in a data center. Uh, this system is called Resource Central for Azure. And to Resource Central, we add algorithms and models to predict a VM's performance criticality. 
and its resource demand. For example, it's P95 uh, CPU utilization. This resource demand is what we treat as a proxy for a VM's power demand. Next, we have a VM schedule, which is protein for Azure. The scheduler is responsible for placing uh, VMs onto servers with the goal of uh, making sure that uh, the VM receives the resources that it wants in terms of number of cores, memory, and so on, while also trying to tightly pack these VMs onto servers so that fragmentation is reduced. To, to the scheduler, we add rules for distributing power via the criticality and utilization predictions that we get from resource central at the time of VM placement. It works in the following way, where at the time of placement, we get these predictions for each VM, and then try to balance the server power between critical and non-critical VMs, as shown in the figure on the right. Although not shown in the figure, we also try to balance the power between the different chassis, so as to reduce hard spots. Now, how this is useful is when we do need to cap the power draw of the server, which, for example, would happen when the chassis power draw goes above the limit, then on each server, we would use a per VM power capping, which understands the criticality of the VMs that are running on the server and throttle the non-critical VMs only for power safety while protecting the performance of the critical VMs. Now, a combination of the ML models, the enhanced VM placement and per VM power capping can increase our subscription by 2x, as I'll describe in a subsequent slide. Let me start by describing how we handle challenge number one, which is inferring criticality of opaque VMs. Now, uh, we treat user-facing workloads as performance critical because, as the name suggests, there's typically a user interacting with these workloads, and any performance or predictability leads to bad user experience. The user might go away, and this would lead to a revenue loss. And therefore, user-facing workloads are typically performance critical. The insight that we have is that user-facing workloads exhibit a tunnel load pattern, as is shown in the figure on the right, where the x-axis shows the time in hours. The dotted bars uh, show the breakdown in days, and the y-axis shows the CPU utilization, which is a proxy for load. Now, as we can see from the figure, uh, on each day, the CPU utilization increases as the day progresses. It hits a peak around midday, and the, the utilization starts to drop. We observe a similar pattern during the other days as well, and typically on weekends, the utilization is much lower. We exploit this behavior to design a template-based algorithm to identify such periodicity in the CPU utilization signal. With this algorithm, we can say that if we find periodicity, then the workload is user-facing, and otherwise it's a non-user-facing load. Now, this algorithm provides us the ability to tag already deployed VMs based on their observed CPU utilization. But as I described earlier, we still need predictions for our enhanced VM placements. Uh, to this end, we have developed an ML model to predict a VM criticality, uh, which is trained using the labels that we have, get from the algorithm. And through evaluation, we found that uh, our ML model has a 99% accuracy in identifying user-facing workloads, which is very important because we want to predict the performance of such workloads. And finally, to our system, we have also added static overrides, uh, which allow us to, for example, tag VMs as always throttling. Uh, VMs that might fall into this category are VMs that we know are running internal non-production workloads. And similarly, we also have a do not throttle list of VMs. Uh, these are VMs that should never be throttled. An example uh, uh, for this category would be uh, all third-party VMs or VMs that we know are running gaming workloads and so on. Now, as the previous slide showed, we have the ability to uh, predict a VM's criticality at the time of deployment. Uh, we can place these VMs based on their criticality and utilization demand, and therefore balance the server power between critical and non-critical VMs. And therefore, when we do need to cap the power drop of a server under power emergencies, then we can rely on per VM power capping. Here I present how per VM power capping allows us to harvest additional power from server where on the, the graph shows the results, where on the x-axis I show the power cap that we have set on the server in watts, And on the y-axis I show the performance for the user-facing and non-user-facing workload, where the performance is normalized to the unconstrained case, where the workloads are running without any power cap being enforced. Now, the experiment is run in the following way, where uh, we set a power cap for the server and either use the full server throttling mechanism or per VM power capping for enforcing that power cap. Uh, now, there are a couple of takeaways from this graph. First, with per VM power capping, we are able to harvest 30 additional watts from the server while providing the same performance as the full server throttling mechanism. 
However, this benefit comes at the cost of increased performance degradation for the non-user facing workload. But we think this, that this is an acceptable trade-off because uh, such workloads have less stringent performance requirements. And furthermore, uh, these workloads might be running on uh, uh, low priority VMs or these might be internal non-production workloads and therefore uh, the performance requirements are even less stringent. Now, as the previous slide showed, uh, with per VM power capping uh, or differentiated capping, we're able to harvest additional power and this forms the basis for our strategy for oversubscription with per VM power capping, where the constraints for our strategy are we fix the number of capping events and the frequency reduction for the critical and non-critical VMs for each of the starting, uh, capping events. And then we use the historical draws to calculate the harvesting opportunity with per VM power capping while we are honoring the constraints that we have for our strategy. The table shows the results of our analysis, where in the traditional case where there is no oversubscription, we are not really harvesting any power. So there's no savings either. With the state-of-the-art approach with full server uh, throttling, we are able to harvest an Azure 6.2% power from our chassis, which translates to around $80 million in savings uh, per data center. But when we use uh, differentiated per VM capping, where we use predictions for our internal workloads uh, and mark them as either critical or non-critical, and also predictions for non-premium external VMs, where uh, these VMs are the ones that Azure advertises as really for dev and test, then we find that with our approach, we can harvest 6.1 additional power over state of the art for a total of 12.1% of power from chassis, which translates to around $155 million in savings. So as a result, show with per VM power capping, we can be selective. We can uh, throttle the non-performance critical VMs only for power safety while protecting the performance of the important ones. And also uh, increase the amount of oversubscription for public cloud platforms by 2x. And let me describe some of the production impact our work has had in the lessons that we learned. So our per VM capping system and the ML models uh, that I described have been deployed across thousands of servers in many Azure data centers. We find that uh, they significantly reduce the throttling for critical VMs when compared to the full server throttling mechanisms that Azure was using earlier. We are still working on deploying our VM placement policy, and then we'll work on uh, the more aggressive or subscription strategy that I described in this talk. Uh, we learned many lessons during this work. Uh, we described them in the paper, and I'll talk about a few of them here. One, we worked on uh, refreshing VM criticality predictions in servers. Now, because we rely on predictions uh, for a VM workload performance criticality, and there might be mispredictions, so we added a feedback mechanism to correct such mispredictions based on the ground truth data, where uh, we observed the CPU utilization patterns of already deployed VMs using the algorithm and correct any mispredictions that might happen so that any performance critical VM is not throttled incorrectly because it was mispredicted as non-performance critical. Next, uh, while talking to data center operators, we learned that they were looking to reduce the number of servers uh, in Iraq for newer deployments because they were afraid of the performance impact of full server throttling on the performance critical VMs that might be running on servers. We described to them our per VM uh, power capping work, and now they're going back to the same number of servers in Iraq. Now, we typically think of our subscription as adding more racks inside a data center, but this is really another form of our subscription where we are adding more servers in a rack and tolerating that additional power consumption using per VM power capping for power safety. Uh, finally, uh, during the course of the work, we realized that the power monitoring and management capabilities that hardware vendors provide today are not really suitable for public cloud platforms. Uh, to address this, we are working with the vendors to design better abstractions, for example, at per VM level uh, on, on futures SOCs. Uh, and this would really enable us to design more, uh, this opens up really more exciting, exciting scenarios. For example, uh, the ability to uh, monitor a power at a VM level would allow us to, uh, to have power aware VM allocation, uh, enforce a uh, power limit on VMs make throttling and killing decisions based on a VM power consumption, and also export a VM power and energy consumption values to the customers because of the enhanced focus on sustainability these days. To conclude, I talked about uh, limited power of subscription on cloud platform because providers want to restrict the performance impact of power capping on the critical workloads. 
Our solution to address this problem is prediction-based per VM power capping, where we design algorithms and ML models to predict a VM's uh, performance criticality and utilization demands. We then use these predictions to, uh, to have an enhanced VM placement where we try to balance the server's power between critical and non-critical VMs. And under power emergencies, we use a per VM power capping system that understands the uh, VM's criticality and throttles the non-critical VMs only for power safety. And then we describe, uh, we uh, design a strategy for criticality aware over subscription that allows us to increase over subscription for cloud platforms by 2x while protecting the performance of the critical workloads. With this, I would like to end my talk and I'm looking forward to uh, sharing your questions during the session.